What if there was one book which told you everything that God had planned for all history from the beginning to the end? You'd want to read it, wouldn't you? Well, in the book of Revelation, there's a scroll which aims to do just that. But the scroll is sealed with seven seals and no one can open them. In chapter five, this is what it says. Then I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne, a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming in a loud voice, who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? But no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth could open the scroll or even look inside it. I wept and wept because no one was found who was worthy to open the scroll or look inside. Then one of the elders said to me, do not weep. See the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David has triumphed. He is able to open the scroll and open its seven seals. So Jesus is found worthy to open the scroll of history. And so what happened when the seals were broken? Well, in chapter six, we heard what happened as the first of the six seals were broken. But after the sixth seal is broken in chapter 6, verse 12, there's a pause. The suspense builds. We won't open the seventh seal until chapter 8, verse 1. So chapter 7 is a little bit like an interlude. You might say it describes what God is doing when the seals are being opened, while the evils of the world are being unmasked. What's God doing in history? What's God doing even in our day, in our time? Well, chapter 7 tells us something magnificent and wonderful. What it tells us is that God is rescuing his people. But, but who are they? And how, how did he save them? Well, as John continues in this vision, in chapter 7, verses 4 to 8, what he hears is the number of those who are going to be saved. And he hears 144,000 from all the tribes of Israel will be saved. And then you've got a list in verses 5 to 8 of the, of the different tribes and that 12,000 people are saved from each tribe, 144,000 in all. It's a very symbolic picture. And this list of tribes is interesting because you don't get this list in the Old Testament. There are various lists of who that people actually are. That's what John hears. But what does he see? In verse 9 we find, And I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one can count from every nation, tribe, people and language, standing before the throne of the Lamb. See, what, what John sees is that God is saving people from every people group, from every country, from every nation, from every tribe. That's what he sees. That's what God's doing. So I ask myself, how does God save them then? Well, he puts a seal on them. He marks them. He says, this one, this one, I will save. And the clue to what that sealing is all about is found in Ezekiel chapter 9, verses 4 to 6. It reminds me of the story of Rahab. Do you remember when she was rescued from Jericho? She had to put a red cord out of a window so that they knew to save her. Well, the people of God are marked with a seal that says they're going to be saved. They will be the ones who triumph. What is that seal? Well, Paul tells us in, chap in, Eph in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, the seal is the Holy Spirit that comes upon us and marks us out for salvation. Those who believe in Jesus Christ, they're the ones who are sealed for salvation. In these dark old days in which we live, not everyone, not everyone's going to come through unscathed. But who will be the ones that make it to, to worship before God's throne? They're the ones who are sealed because they have put their faith and trust in Jesus. Have you?